Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where we're going to be reacting, or I'm going to be reacting, to your unpopular opinions. Last time we did this video, it was incredibly funny and amusing and entertaining because you guys really bring it with your opinions, let me tell you. So I put out a call for some more of your unpopular opinions and just like last time, you delivered, you delivered, okay? I was shook to my core just looking at them. So hold on to your hats, let's get started. Okay, so when these first started coming in, I looked at a few and then I stopped looking at them until right now because I don't like to spoil it. I like to react live as we speak. I want my initial reaction to be here with you guys. I want us to react together you know, to some of these quite shocking opinions. So first up, Renata, concealer is not necessary if you use a good foundation. You see, I guess, the th here's the thing, here's, here's my thought on this. Um, for some people, I guess concealer is never necessary. I mean, if you don't have under eye, darkness or dark circles or discoloration or blemishes that you want to cover, concealer or even foundation is not necessary for everybody depending on you know what you want to do but I don't know that it's correct to say that concealer is not necessary if you use a good foundation because here's the thing there are excellent foundations that have a sheer coverage that have a very light amount of coverage and that will not cover some people's under eye situations under eye darkness if you want that area to be completely covered a very good foundation that doesn't have a full coverage isn't going to do it so for some people it just depends what your preference is. You know, I have darkness under my eyes, but it's not the most extreme. And I like a medium coverage foundation. So I like to use a full coverage concealer under my eyes. I don't want to put a lot of product under my eyes. And I would need to put a lot of a more medium coverage foundation under my eyes. Does that mean that foundation isn't good? No, it just means the coverage is different. So Agree to disagree. Ella Graham makeup says false lashes never, never look good. I, I will say they've never looked good on me. I don't know what it is, what my problem is, but I don't like them. I can't be bothered. I always prefer how mascara looks, but I have seen false lashes look incredible on other people. So I guess I disagree, but not for myself. For myself, I agree. But for others, I feel like some people and specific lashes look, can look amazing and very natural as well. Callie DeWale, I'm so sorry. I know that's definitely not correct how you pronounce your Instagram handle. I hate cream bronzers, eyeshadows, blush. I'm oily. Only use a good liquid foundation and powders. I hear you. I hear you. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I have been trying. I made tried to make this year. It was a, a resolution for me to use more creams, to try more creams and liquid products because prior to this year, I don't think I had like a single one that was in regular rotation in my collection that I used like outside of just review purposes. Okay. And then they went straight in the like makeup graveyard drawer. This year, I've definitely found a few that I love. The Charlotte Tilbury Cream Bronzer. That is in regular rotation months after review. I might even hit pan on that, okay? Who would have thunk it? And I have found a couple of cream blushes that I like. Also, I love the Lisa Eldridge liquid shadows. So I have found some creams and liquids that I like, but I don't have an oilier skin type. So I hear you. And do you know what? You don't have to like cream. I feel like people who are like cream people, they want everyone else to be a cream person. And sometimes, some of us just aren't, you know, and that's a, a valid life choice, okay? Leave us alone. We're allowed to prefer powder, okay? Stop trying to make cream happen. Maze Liz says, Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadows are overrated. They're only average and some drugstore are better, especially Revolution. Do you, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you mean Makeup Revolution, but I cannot, I cannot agree. 
like my experience with makeup revolution is 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 not the same as yours on the other side of the coin itinerant islander nice name affordable makeup is affordable for a reason in some cases i mean i will agree there's terrible high-end luxury products there are excellent affordable products but there are also some terrible affordable products that have a lower price tag for a reason i think the sort of the the difference that is consistent is that high-end slash luxury makeup typically has like extra zhuzh pizzazz things like packaging things like cherries on top components applicators things like how like wear time just those little you know you know but it's not necessarily actually how good the product looks on the skin there are definitely great affordable products but you know i don't want to use them i get this i get people trying to force affordable makeup down my throat i know some people really wish i would use drugstore or affordable products but i just i it's it's the same thing with cream products i don't want to i prefer high end luxury makeup doesn't mean i don't know there are good drugstore affordable products i just don't choose or want to use them and i i won't be sorry nick morby says seeing people have foundation on their lips and not wipe it off before lipstick makes me cringe but but why why I have no idea why why that would happen. I mean, I that's definitely me. I never bother. I can't be bothered to wipe foundation off my lips. A few reasons. One, can't be bothered. Waste of a makeup wipe. No need. Unnecessary for me. Two, my lips, my natural lips are quite pigmented. They're quite red. And if I wiped the foundation off of my lips, I, that's going to pull through the lipstick. So for me, it's not a negative to apply lipstick on top of foundation. One, it actually helps it wear. Two, I actually get the color of the lipstick and not like half the color of the lipstick and half my natural lips pulling through, which would make everything go redder, which I don't want. So I don't know why that would make you cringe. But yeah, for me, that is like, I, I, I don't get it. That has its benefits. So yeah, I don't know what would be upsetting you about that but okay Aaliyah Joe might be a popular opinion probably is brands release the same palette every holiday De I mean for sure I feel like holiday you know there's it's it's a bit like well most seasons in makeup they have like their cliched holiday means everything must be sparkly and glittery and we see a lot of like you know reds and we see a lot of silvery tones like it's the it's you know the cliche this is what a holiday palette should look like so I guess there's only so many different ways to do that um I definitely would suggest that Hourglass have essentially been bringing out the same you know, face palette for about 10 years now. So, you know, I don't think you're wrong. Tuncia, hopefully that's in the ballpark of how that's pronounced. I support the do not over pluck brows brief, but do not pluck anything ever isn't the answer. Int intriguing. Now I will say I don't touch my brows anymore. I learned from the 90s that, uh, not to do that, not a good idea, I'm not qualified and bad things happen and I do tend to overplug. Now I have my brows professionally done, I have my brows laminated once every couple of months and I don't touch them in between, I do not pluck a single hair from the brows, I leave that to my brow tech but obviously she does, she waxes them and plucks them so to, you know, within an inch of their life. I mean, really, I support you being as hairy or as bald as you choose. I don't really feel like we should go around telling everybody that there's this expectation to be a hairless cat, you know? Body hair is there, it's very, very natural, whether it's on your face, your armpits, wherever your body hair is, there's this, you know, we, we've been taught that we must be bald all over our entire bodies. And I don't know that that's necessary. I feel like, you you know, you want to leave your natural brows as they are, you can do whatever you want, you know? Who's to say where hair should be? I guess where where it grows. You know? Vixen of Makeup, love it, love the name. 
Lipstick applied before lip liner makes no sense. Your lipstick can and will still bleed. So here's the thing. I almost always, if I'm going to use a lip liner, I almost always would do liner before lips. But that's not because I'm trying to stop my lipstick bleeding. That's not really an issue I have very much. I don't know if that just comes with your lips and the lip area maturing or if it's the lipsticks that you're using. But I don't really have an issue really ever with lipstick bleeding, liner or not my reason motivation if you will for using a lip liner is typically to get a crisper line or to have some light and shade between my liner and my lipstick and so for me it's a lot of the time if I'm using a if I'm using a dramatic like pigmented rich lip color and I want like a crisp line and I don't think I can get that with a lipstick that's what I use a liner for and sometimes what happens is I'll apply my lipstick without liner and mess it up. And then I will go in with a liner to tidy up the edges and to tidy up the shape and just to give myself a more even lip line than I've achieved using a lipstick. So that's why I would go in with a liner after a lipstick to tidy up edges. Um, but yeah, I don't, yes, okay, so I'm um, sure. But you know, you do it in whatever order makes you happy. Another one from Vixen of Makeup, setting your eye primer before applying eyeshadow makes no sense. It's tacky for a reason. I think, again, I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think that's just how eyeshadow primer is supposed to be used. I don't know that I don't know that I see many people setting it. I set, if I prime my eyes with concealer, I set it. You know, concealer typically needs to be set but you don't have to. Obviously, the reason you use leave an eyeshadow primer tacky is to, for your eyeshadow to stick to it and to get the most pigment out of your shadows. So yes, I agree. I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. I think that's just a fact. That's how eyeshadow primer is supposed to be used, I believe. Kaz says, highlighter is overrated and I would rather get my glow from a super bl glowy blush any day, any day of the week. I... I don't disagree. I flipping love a glowy blush. I love a glowy blush, okay? But here's the thing, glow enhances texture. So if you have a very textured cheek area and you're gonna put glow all over it, that is really gonna enhance that texture. Whereas, you know, a more matte or a satin blush and then strategically placed highlighter is gonna leave you a much smoother, less textured, cheek area so I think for some people it makes sense to me and it's all just about preference isn't it I like a bit of light and shade I like a glowy blush and highlight you know that's how I roll why have less when you can have more you know Mina says I hate most products I've tried from MAC intriguing what have you tried I'd like to know um I think MAC has good bad average ugly great products and everything in between that I did not list. I don't think you can really go wrong with their lipsticks. I think they have great lip liners as well. I think they have great blushes, great blushes. Some of the best blushes in the game still to this day. Um, foundations I feel like could be better. Concealers I feel like could be better. They've got the great MAC Stack mascara now, but prior to that, their mascaras could also have been better. Their eyeshadows could be better but I think they have got some good products. But you know, like, like most brands, not everything is a hit. I will agree with you there. Mylanita, black liquid liner is overrated and doesn't look natural at all for everyday looks. My question here is, is, is black eyeliner intended to look natural? I'm, I'm not sure that it is. Sisawa definitely is not how that's pronounced, but I hate Baccarat Rouge 540. Please don't hate me. I won't hate you. Are you mad? Here's the thing. Here is the thing. Fragrance is so subjective. One, not only is like your experience and your taste and your preferences and what we like when it comes to fragrance so subjective, like the most subjective thing of life, I feel. So preferences are valid. You don't have to like everything I like. Absolutely not. That would be strange if you did. But also fragrance is sneaky and it does not smell the same on everybody. How a fragrance smells on you is completely different to how it might smell on the next person. But I typically don't go for like 
very easygoing crowd pleasing fragrances. So it is very, very common that someone wouldn't like my perfumes because I'd like to choose weird ones and strange perfumes. I like to wear perfumes where people are going to notice it and some people are really going to appreciate, but others are going to be like, what on earth is that scent? What is that? So that is fine by me. Tracy says the fallout from Charlotte, Tracy says the fallout from Charlotte Tilbury's shadows makes them unusable. I am surprised by this one because in the like, line of sh eyeshadows and formulas that I am familiar with and have used and tried a lot. Charlotte Tilbury is really low on like the scale of fallout. So I'm really surprised that that's your experience. I will say like some of the glitter or like topper shades have some fallout, but the rest of her shadows, like her typical mattes and satins and metallics, really I don't have an issue with fallout with those at all. So that's really interesting that that's your experience. But yes, um, I have a different one, but we all have different experiences and that's the beauty of life. <laughs> You know, O'Brien, I really didn't like Armani Luminous Silk Too Faced Concealer or MAC Stack on me. Now, here's the thing. Armani Luminous Silk, back in the day, was the foundation. It was the foundation of YouTube. It was the one everybody used, everybody loved. Everyone said it was the best of the best of the best. I tried so hard for years to love that foundation and I liked it. I feel like I still feel like I made myself like it but it, it wasn't wowing me either. I never really got the hype. One, I massively struggled ever finding a shade in that foundation that really looked like in any way close to my skin tone. So that was a big issue because that really affects how you feel about a foundation. If, you, if it looks off because of the shade, you're never going to love it. I never really got it. Like I never got the hype, honestly, I agree. Um, the Too Faced Concealer, very, very high coverage, very thick very heavy concealer. So it's not gonna be for everybody. Max Stack, I'm surprised. I am surprised because I do love that mascara, but you know, again, mascara is almost as subjective as perfume. So, you know, that's allowed, you're fine. 1966 Mia, Chanel quads are overrated generally way too sheer. Chanel eyeshadows are really not like my favorite eyeshadow formula for that reason, like, Everyone has different tastes when it comes to eyeshadow. I like, this is what I like, you know? It's Pat McGrath for me. So obviously you would expect Chanel, like complete opera and opposite polar end of the spectrum when it comes to eyeshadow. Chanel eyeshadows are very refined, very smooth, very light on the pigment, soft, understated, like typically most of Chanel's line. They're very Chanel, I would say. So I think you have to love and appreciate Chanel as a brand to like be the person that their eyeshadows are special to. It's not me, they're not that special to me. I, I, I agree that they are like sheer, they don't have enough pigment for my taste, but I just think that I'm not their target audience to be honest, so yeah. That's a preference thing, I guess. I will just say, I had a lot of like, I don't like Pat McGrath eyeshadows, they're overrated, and the same with Charlotte Tilbury is overrated, blah, blah, blah. But we did cover that in the first video. So if you, um, if that's your, one of your opinions was about Pat McGrath or Charlotte Tilbury being overrated, then my first video, we spoke about that. So I, I don't want to repeat myself, but we already did that. Maria, women over 45 can't wear color, F em. I agree. Women over 45 are like old enough to do whatever they want, frankly, and nobody can tell them otherwise. How Mel says, fallout isn't problematic. A light dusting of glitter to the cheeks isn't the end of the world. I tend to agree. I do always kind of mention the level of fallout when I'm reviewing eyeshadows just because I know lots of people hate it. And like, we've already had a fallout hater comment here. I know lots of people can't stand it. I couldn't care less. Doesn't affect me really whatsoever. I always do my eyeshadow first, so it's not going to, you know, stay there. I can either wipe it away or just sort of 
dust it and continue as if it never happened and it doesn't affect my life but I know some people cannot stand fallout so yeah that's definitely one of those where you know it's just a personal preference. Kifani 007 maple syrup is too sweet and coffee is awful even the smell. <gasps> Now I will say this, I was I was too a coffee hater until about mm, how how long ago? Maybe 10, maybe more years ago. I certainly wasn't like drinking coffee out the womb or anything like that. I started off with a caramel frappuccino. I know, a caramel mac something, ca something with caramel in it that was essentially a warm caramel drink that with a with a hint of coffee. I've always liked the smell and the idea of coffee but the taste was like hideous to me and I still even now don't really like strong coffee espresso anything like that but I have come to like fully get involved I make my own iced coffee now on a daily basis have you tried nice coffee is my question but you don't have to like it I'm just I I don't know how you get through the day do you have children What's happening? Unapologetic Leah says, I don't always want to feel like I'm being whacked in the face by pigment in my eyeshadows. Nor should you. Nor should you have to feel like that. Maybe you are a Chanel connoisseur. Maybe those shadows are more for you. That's okay. Not everybody likes the same amount of pigment or colour or glitter or shimmer or sparkle or whatever. We are all wonderfully different and probably you love a Chanel eyeshadow because they're much softer and, you know, horses for courses is the theme of this video. Live and let live. You don't have to like anything that anybody else does. You do you, you know. But let everybody else enjoy whatever they like, okay? That's the agreement here. Esther Giroux, sunscreen is overrated. Oh, people are going to be mad about this one. Um, shaming people because they got a tan is awful. I love vitamin D. Me too. I love the vitamin D. And I will also say, um, definitely agree that shaming people who you know, pick up a tan in summer. I get, uh, I have a huge amount of issues with this on my channel that when I um, tan, my skin naturally tans a, a lot in the summer. Um, I get a lot of very irritating, annoying comments. I actually had to put the word tan in my blocked words at one point because that's how much I got trolled about my skin tone, my natural skin tone. And I get a lot of abuse and just nonstop going on about it, which is frankly boring. And I'll say that, you know, I do wear SPF. I always wear SPF on my face, a high SPF. And in summer, you know, if I'm going out in the sun, I also wear SPF on my body. It really does not in any way stop my skin picking up a tan, it still happens. I have got the most horrendous strap marks on my back because whenever I'm like sit out or have lunch out during the summer, we go for a picnic or I sit in the pub garden to have lunch, whatever. I always sit with my back to the sun because I don't want the sun on my face. And I always sit with my back to the sun. I have a little SPF stick. It always goes on my shoulders, on the back of my neck, only where that is exposed. With And it's S SPF 50. Without fail, if I sit outside like that with my back to the sun in the summer for an hour, I will have the most extreme strap marks <laughs> from whatever top I'm wearing, whatever I do. I cannot stop it. I cannot help it. The only way to stop it would be to go like fully clothed head to toe all year round, which I cannot, frankly. I will dissolve into a puddle on the floor. But I definitely always wear my sunscreen. So we'll have to agree to disagree on that one. Feud Lou says CT Charlotte Tilbury magic cream is like an old Nana cream. Oh, people aren't going to like that one. I mean, I don't mind it, but I won't necessarily go out and buy it. You know, I'm like when it comes to moisturizer, I don't really need a really fancy one. I just want one that is moisturizing. That's all I ask for. OK, I'm a simple beast, but... <laughs> 
that did make me laugh. Sahija, I'm so tired of new releases. I don't get excited anymore. I now wait a couple of months to see if people are still excited. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think a cooling off period is great. And also, <laughs> I imagine your bank balance is super happy about that. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. I think a lot of people, a few years ago, everybody bought everything and everyone was, you know, that spending habits in beauty became ridiculous and everyone got carried away and now it's like we've all got everything already and if you were you know super into makeup and beauty five years ago probably by now you have run out of things to get excited about but you know that's great for your wallet is, is what I would say. Why pH 500? I'm not in love with the living proof dry shampoo that everyone loves. <laughs> I am. I really love it. I barely go a day without it. I My hair today is, what day are we? We are day six, day six hair. Can't live without the stuff. One, smells incredible. Two, no white cast on the hair. I love it. I live for it. I enjoy it, but you know, you don't, you don't have to, maybe it doesn't work for everybody, but it definitely works for me. It is my favorite and I love it. And I don't know what I would do without it. Well, I do know I just have a really greasy head. G. Shuffer Guajardo, would you ever do a drugstore product video ever? Here's the thing, here's the thing. When I first started my channel, I did drugstore and high end and like everything in between, okay? Um, but as I, and when I started my channel, I really wasn't super into makeup. I was just getting into makeup. Like that was the start of my channel, me like exploring makeup, finding what I liked. And I quite quickly found one, I really just preferred high end and luxury makeup. And I really, that's what I enjoyed. And that's what I was passionate about. So naturally it followed that I just was reviewing mostly high end and luxury makeup. And then I was doing a few drugstore slash affordable reviews when there was something I was interested in or when something came out that I was excited about that I genuinely wanted to try. I wanted my channel to be authentic. So I didn't want to just review every single, I've never really done like a lot of reviews. I wanted my channel to be a bit of variation and mix. And I don't really like to just review every single release and being English and unable to get hold of a lot of releases and a lot of the more popular affordable brands I can't do that anyway because a lot of it isn't available to me or just isn't available like as quickly here and therefore I kind of miss out on a lot of stuff that I can't review. So I kind of got to be a bit more creative with my content and what I make as far as my videos. So what I found was that as I got more into luxury and high-end makeup and that was what I was choosing naturally myself to re review, to use and that I was showing on my channel, I was getting a lot of people who were constantly attacking me, going on about, I want more drugstore, you need to do more drugstore, why haven't you done, you haven't done a drugstore review for this many weeks, why, blah, 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 blah. And, I, and I found like actually the fact that my channel was kind of featuring some drugstore some t of the time was causing me a lot of hassle and a lot of aggro because it, throwing in one or two here when I was genuinely interested in the product meant that the people who were following my channel and here for drugstore slash affordable reviews were never happy with me. They were always annoyed that I wasn't doing more. It was never good enough. I was always getting harassed about it. So I made a decision after a certain amount of time that, do you know, what, I'm genuinely not interested in drugstore and affordable makeup for myself and doing bits here and there for my channel and for the viewers who are in interested in it is actually causing me more stress, more hassle than it was worth. I felt like what I was, it was just never good enough. And I was getting a lot more hassle for doing bits of drugstore and affordable makeup than if I made the decision which I made, which was to go completely high end luxury. That's what I like anyway. That's what I want to use anyway for myself. And I felt like it was more clear then. This is what my channel is. It's high end, it's luxury beauty, and that is what I do. So I have done drugstore and affordable years ago. 
I'm not interested in it now for my own self. My own personal preference is luxury and high end. And the reason I don't sort of do drugstore reviews anymore for people who want that from me is because it causes me a lot of hassle and irritation because people just want more and more and more then. And it's just, yeah, I feel like it's confusing and it's much clearer for everybody that this is what I do. And I don't do drugstore and affordable. There are a lot of channels that do drugstore and affordable makeup. So, you know, you can get that from them. I love and am passionate about and enjoy high-end and luxury makeup. And that is what I do here. So I think it's just easier to be clear that this is what my channel is. And therefore, everyone knows what to expect and what is not going to come from my channel. Karen says, I hate Tom Ford Rose Quartz so much and the Chantecai Giraffe. And I force myself to use them. Don't do that, Karen. Don't do it. This is what I learned from doing my project pan that I will never do again. And I was forcing myself to use products that I didn't really want to um, just to, you know, try and hit pan. And what I learned is life is too short to be using products that don't give you joy. Makeup, doing our makeup, it should be about joy and what makes us happy and what we love and what makes us feel beautiful and that we just enjoy. Treat yourselves nicely. OK, do not force yourself to use those products, sell them, gift them to someone or just put them in the makeup graveyard drawer. Use the products that keep you happy and give you joy. We've already spent the money on those. If you can get some money back, then great. But if not, use the products you love and make you happy. Life is too short to be using makeup we hate. No stop it. So I think that's as many unpopular opinions as we can possibly shoehorn into this video before it goes into extra time. You guys always come through with the unpopular opinions. So thank you so much to everybody who sent one in. They always are so fun to do. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye. -bye, -bye, -bye.